to Cafe Astro Athens. Over this cup of mini coffee today, I'm going to discuss the discovery of Earth's new mini moon. Cheers. Now I'm out here reporting to you guys live from the Midwest in the United States of America. And that's because of what's going on with COVID-19. I am quarantined over at my pop's house. So that's why you see some really funny things behind me like a skeleton. Now, unlike my big cup of coffee right here, this one is a miniature version of that caffeine. Very similarly, we have Earth's satellite known as the moon, which would be this one. But we now have a new discovery, which is a mini moon that is now orbiting Earth. Unlike the moon, which derived from the Earth's core itself during an early planetesimal formation, the mini moon had formed from something different, something more asteroid-like. Now you see, there's an orbit of asteroids located between Jupiter and Mars, known as the asteroid belt. Now what can happen occasionally is the gravitational influence of Jupiter can slingshot an asteroid or two out into the inner solar system, which is where Earth is. A lot of times these asteroids can travel millions of kilometers and eventually make their way past Earth. Most of the time, they're actually pulled into the orbit of the sun and will either orbit around the sun or slingshot back out into space. What happened this time is the discovery of a moon that's orbiting Earth. It's known as 2020 CD3. And it was discovered on February 15th of 2020 by the Catalina Sky Survey located out in Mount Lebon, which is in Arizona. It was discovered by two astronomers who were asteroid hunting. And when they found this silly looking object orbiting around Earth, their first thought was, okay, it's either an asteroid or space junk. 2020 CD3 is being classified as a moon of Earth because it is orbiting around Earth. Every time that it catches the reflection of the sun, astronomers are able to look at it. They're able to measure its speed, and based on that, they've determined that it must be some type of heavy material. The size they've been able to estimate is about the size of a car. So it's just between two to four meters in size, no bigger than that. Based on how fast it's moving, astronomers are led to believe that it is composed of some type of metallic -y, uh, core and elements, such as most asteroids, which are metallic. They are composed of about 80% iron, and the remaining is a mixture of iridium and different type of metallic elements, as opposed to the other type of asteroid, which is more rocky based, which are very similar to the core of Earth. 2020 CD3 is not the first mini moon to be discovered. There actually was one prior to this. However, it is the first mini moon to be orbiting Earth that's been discovered. However, don't get too attached. It's only gonna be sticking around for about another two weeks, and then it's gonna be traveling on out back into the solar system. Now, astronomers have estimated that it'll actually be returning back to Earth in about 20 years. Now, considering that it's such a small size, what does that mean for Earth? Is it going to suddenly change our tidal forces? Is it going to affect our tides in the ocean? The answer is no. It's too small of a size to actually have an impact right now gravitationally on Earth, which is pretty great, so we're in the clear. Now there's something known as a quasi-moon, which are just asteroids that are flung out from the asteroid belt, that one I mentioned earlier, that then pass by the Earth and then the Sun. Now, typically they do stay within orbit around the sun, not specifically the earth. So this would not be classified as a quasi moon. There also is a classification of asteroids known as the horseshoe asteroids that orbit the sun as well. However, the gravity from earth actually allows for its trajectory. So its orbit to be a U shape. So what ends up happening is it's pulled in by the gravity of the sun and then the earth's gravity actually throws it off its trajectory and it goes flinging out into space. This also is not a horseshoe asteroid. Now there are charged dust particles located between the Earth and the Moon, known as the Kordilovsky clouds. And they're parts between the Earth and the Moon, as I mentioned, where there's a space rock, actually that's been classified, known as Trojan asteroid. It remains around the Earth and the Moon, but it's still not an actual satellite of the Earth. Now looking at these diagrams, astronomers have been able to analyze the orbital motion, which indicates that it's heavy for its size. As I mentioned earlier, it's quite small in size. There must be some heavy composition to it to see that it has such 
a repetitive orbital motion. It's constantly orbiting around Earth, but in such a rapid pace. Now this leads astronomers to believe that it is in fact an asteroid. Now the next few weeks, scientists will be studying it a lot more closely before it actually leaves us. It is starting to get dimmer and dimmer day by day. And by June, it may be too faint to see anymore. Now what you see right here is an image taken by the eight meter Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii. This image is actually combining three images in one. They were each obtained using different filters, hence seeing the red, the blue, the green, those are three different filters. And they were able to combine them to to create this color composite. Now the reason why the moon itself is remaining stationary, 2020 CD3, which you see right in the center, that little dot, is because the telescope was indeed fixed on that item. Meanwhile, everything around it was moving. What the color, what the streaks in the background are, are moving stars. And now what this diagram right here represents is that 2020 CD3, actually entered Earth's orbit three years ago. And it was only found recently by, of course, those astronomers that I mentioned earlier from Catalina Observatory. But that's astonishing. It was actually here three years ago is when it entered our orbit, but now was only this close in order to actually be observed. Now keep in mind, a lot of other planets in our solar system have many moons. They don't just have one, like the Earth. So it actually is a rarity to have just one satellite, such as the Earth, which has just our moon, compared to Jupiter and Mars, Saturn, which have multiple, multiple moons. Speaking of Saturn, Saturn's rings are filled up with tiny dust and ice particles. A lot of times these can collide and start to form something known as a moonlet, which I did a video on once, which was really exciting for the Tomorrow Show. And I love it. They discovered moonlets in the rings of Saturn. These are baby moons that are now starting to form. So is that what we're starting to see orbiting Earth? Not exactly. We still believe that it is an asteroid that came from outer regions of our solar system and came inward to the inner parts of our solar system and got trapped by the gravity of Earth. Now, what I'm looking forward to most with this research is the Vera Rubin Observatory, which is going to be taking mass images of our night sky to then piece together and see what exactly is going on when it comes to stray asteroids entering Earth's orbit. In addition to a new satellite being developed by the University of Arizona, known as the Near Earth Object Surveillance Mission, we're gonna be prepared and have more advanced telescopes to have a better analysis of 2020 CD3 when it comes back around in a few decades. So when it comes back around, I'm really looking forward to the research that will come out of that. Are there more moons out there? that are going to be orbiting our planets, that are going to be orbiting our very own planet Earth. Well, I hope you all found this to be as fascinating as I have. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure when you look up at the moon at night, you also say hello to 2020 CD3, our second moon. Till next time, cheers.